How's it going guys? I'm Danny and this week I have a Q&A episode. Wait a second. It's the same shirt I wore last week. Crap. Give me just a minute. All right. Crap, I haven't done the board either. Not worried about it. Not worried about it. Whatever. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's try again. How's it going, guys? I'm Danny, and this week I have a Q&A episode. The questions here are coming from a thread that I posted on Reddit. I think next time I'll do this, I'll post a Facebook thread and some Twitter questions as well. Uh, but this time the questions are just coming from Reddit. So make sure you keep an eye on my Facebook page and my Twitter feed so next time I do one of these, you can get your questions answered. Um, if you have any specific questions for me or you'd like a form critique, you can message my athlete page on Facebook, and I'll be glad to help you out there. But let's move on to the questions for today. So my first question comes from Full Halter. He says, what are some good drills I can do while doing field work that will make it either more effective or more fun? So field work gets boring. It's fun going out and throwing far, but throwing far will only get you so far. So it's good to make field work practice besides just throwing far. My favorite game to play is trying to land discs on other discs. After warming up, I'll start by throwing my putter as far as I can. And then I'll take my mid ranges and try and land them on the putter. Then I'll pick the mid range that went the farthest and try to land my fairways on it. And if I land them on it or pretty close and I have an extra, I'll throw that one as far as I can and try to land my distance drivers on top of it. But that's just one example. You can play lots of different accuracy games. You can try throwing into soccer goals or if there's lines painted, you can try and land it in different circles. I like to play accuracy games in the field. X John J says, is higher fade only preferred when playing dog leg lefts? If not, what other times are higher fade discs preferred? So. Higher fade discs are great in the woods for dog leg lefts, but in the open, higher fade discs are more accurate. And that's because the fade shortens the flight and means they're not gonna go too far past. And because they have high fade, regardless of what the wind is doing, they're gonna drop at more or less the exact same position every time. So if I have a shot where I can throw an Emac Truth dead straight and try and land it right by the basket, or take a felon on a little bit of a wider hyzer and spike it in, I'm probably gonna take the felon because that's gonna give me the most accurate shot because the higher fade disc is more accurate. X John J also says, are higher weight discs only preferred when playing in heavy wind? Is there a time where wind isn't an issue that a 180 gram disc is better than say a 165 of the same mold? So 165 discs in general go farther because you can throw them faster. Lighter weight discs also tend to hold an ante a little bit better or a straight shot a little bit longer before fading out. And that's because they're not as heavy. They don't have all of that weight creating that gyroscope to fade them. Urbans One says, how do you determine where your arm speed is at when selecting drivers? So this is really hard to do, but in general, I like to see if a disc is flying as it's designed. So if I hand you an evidence and I say that this evidence is supposed to flip over and go to the right and you throw it and it hooks left the entire time, chances are you don't have an arm speed for an evidence. But if you throw the evidence and eventually it starts to go pretty straight and glide a little right and then eventually it'll flip over too much for you, then I would say your arm speed is graduated past the evidence, which is a mid range and you can jump up to a fairway driver like the Escape. Now it's important not to look just at numbers when doing this, but to talk to people about how the discs are designed to fly. And Escape's numbers are very overstable when you compare it to some other discs, but when you actually throw an Escape, you can see that it's very straight or even a little bit understable, whereas the numbers would lead you to believe it's pretty overstable. So um, don't look at numbers, but look at how the discs are designed to fly. The upper deck says, how do you throw an Annie forehand without feeling like you're going to hurt yourself? I, I don't know that much about forehand, but I can tell you that you wanna keep the disc on the same plane the entire time. So that means all the way coming from your reach back through the shot, through your follow through, you want it to be on that Anheuser angle. So keep the disc up a little bit higher and follow through down, almost like a karate chop towards uh, your left hip. Keep your follow through on that angle and the disc is going to be aligned on that angle a lot better. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's all I've got for you this week. Next week, I think I'll have another side-by-side -side form comparison, but that requires me filming Drew when he comes to do a clinic in town this week. Um, the next tournament I'm playing is a B tier in Fairfield Bay, Arkansas. It's called the Full Blown Open, and Matt Lloyd is running it. He drives one of the Dynamic Disc RVs. It's an awesome course. It's two temporary courses. One is really wooded, and the other is on a wide open golf course, and it's a really, really fun tournament. So if you're in the area, I highly suggest coming and checking it out. I'll be there. And I think that's all I have for this week. Until next time, remember, slow is smooth and smooth is far.